I'm Justin Mott and welcome to my home in Hanoi, Vietnam. And if you're new here, my channel is dedicated to all things photography from the perspective of a full-time working professional photographer. And today I'm going to talk about common street photography mistakes. This is part two, so if you didn't watch part one, go back and watch that first. Or you could actually just watch this and then go back and watch that. Either way, these are common street photography mistakes that I've seen all you guys make out there. I've made some of them through the course of my career and I don't want you to make them anymore. So if you don't want to make these mistakes anymore, watch the rest of this episode. Okay guys, as always, don't forget to check out my online store at justinmott.com where I've got presets like this one that will not make you a better photographer, but it will add some pop to your images. I've also got an assortment of online one-on-one -on -one educational packages out there. You can check all those out. People interested in just doing one hour with me for a portfolio review or just some advice about the project, all the way up to my extensive mentorship program where you hire me per month and you've got full access to me via WhatsApp. We do sessions every single week. We do a lot of work offline. This is for people that want help with their photography business or people that really just want help, they want to dive into a personal project. You can see one of my students here, my student Alexis, shout out to Alexis if you watch this episode. Uh, you can see some of the images that she's created with working with me through her project. She's done all the work, but I've been guiding her through this project. So if you're interested in that kind of intensive learning or just a one-on-one -on -one session for one hour, you can check all that out at justinmott.com. So let's dive into it. Today, I'm gonna to talk about common street photography mistakes. This is part two. Part one was a success, or at least a success for me. You guys had some great responses on there. It got my most views in a long time. I like talking about it, so everybody wins in this situation. This isn't like a forced one either. I had like a whole list of 10, but when I was filming it after five, it was about the length I wanted it to be. So I figured I'd dive in and get into these other ones. So. Who has time to waste? Let's just kind of dive into it. So my number one mistake today that I see people make in their street photography and really in all of their photography is not shooting in good light. So during my portfolio reviews, I always look at people's work and I'll see like one or two pictures in really beautiful light and the majority of the pictures in really bad light. So I know you know it exists, I know you know how to capture it, but then you seem to have forgotten in the rest of your portfolio. It's really not that difficult. It's just waking up early. So if you're not a morning person, if you have a hard time getting out of bed, I'm not gonna say go shoot at sunset. I'm gonna say shoot at sunrise and shoot at sunset. So figure out how to be a morning person. You know, drink coffee, go to bed early, don't drink so much late at night. Whatever you gotta do to become a morning person, do it. You know, take a nap in the afternoon, whatever that takes. That's the fix. You know, get up early. There's a whole bunch of other benefits as well. I mean, the things you're gonna see are gonna be different at sunrise, but just purely the, the light. Purely the light is gonna be more beautiful. You're gonna put yourself in a better situation and be ahead of the game. Good shots are just going to exist all around you. You're still going to have to do some work and capture them and be patient and do all the other things I said. But this is one of those ones that even if you did most of the other things that I said, but you don't do this, it's not going to work. This one should have been number one in my other episode, but I wanted to save it to entice you to watch this episode. So shoot in good light. Now, I don't mean like you need to actually capture the sunrise, like you need the sun rising in your shot. You don't need that picture. But the point is, is the light early in the morning, it's going to create some nice light. You know, on people's faces, you know, it's not that harsh light in the middle of the day, which creates these ugly shadows under people's eyes. Uh, early morning light, you're going to get these great shadows bouncing around the alleyways. You're going to get these long shadows on the ground of people. It's just going to be beautiful. Trust me. Get up early. Figure out how to be a morning person. Whatever you've got to do, change your way of thinking. Get up, get motivated, get out there and shoot first thing. Learn how to capture good light and immediately your street photography will get better. Number two on my list is not anticipating. Now I see a lot of photographers that take really good pictures, but they're not like great pictures or they don't have a lot of like awesome moments in their portfolio. It's because like, okay, yes, they were patient, right? And yes, they recognize a good scene. They saw that beautiful light. They saw that texture. They saw what they wanted. Maybe these different layers were presenting themselves and they were there and they waited and they captured the shot. When it just happened to pass through their frame, Okay, but the ones that got those beautiful moments, those moments where you're like, oh, that photographer was really lucky, they, they weren't. Yeah, a tiny bit of luck. A lot of you think it, luck was everything. It wasn't. They did all the other things I mentioned and they anticipated. So, you know, what's that thing they say in sports? Like any motor vehicle sports or like bike racing or Formula One or anything like that. They're like, don't look where you're at right now. Look where you want to go, right? So it's the same thing with photography. Have that scene set up, be ready for it, but don't just look there. Like look down the street, anticipate. If someone's gonna walk through that frame, You've got to be ready. Maybe they're really tall. Maybe they've got a small dog and you want to capture a small dog, so you've got to get down low. Maybe they're walking their giraffe for a walk. They shouldn't be taking their giraffe for a walk because they shouldn't own a giraffe. The giraffe should be in the wild. But if they were and you were there, you know, you know where to be because that giraffe's going to pass through the lights. So you know, oh, maybe that shaft of light's not going to work, so you've got to bounce over there. Maybe there's going to be a nice foreground, so not, don't just anticipate down the street to the right and to the left. 
where that light is, anticipate your foreground as well. Like, take a step back. Maybe there's going to be someone passing through here. Maybe there's a car going to come through and they're going to splash some water. At the same time, that person's going to pass through with their pet giraffe. Anticipation. You know, if you anticipate, you look around, you're going to make that shot better. You're going to be ready when it happens. So you're going to take all those other things I said, that beautiful light, that patience, recognizing the scene, all those things, and then anticipate. You anticipate. You're ready, it's gonna elevate your shots, you're gonna have beautiful shots, so don't forget to anticipate. The next mistake I see people make is not having a purpose and not having a style. Now, in the beginning of your photography career, if you're an amateur, uh, when you just get started, it's it's common, it's normal to like shoot cliche shots, it's normal to kind of go out without, without a purpose and learn the technical parts and like kind of mimic other people, but at some point you should strive to shed that. You should strive to become your own person, your own photographer, and develop your own style and have purpose to your images, have purpose to your single images, have purpose to your body of work. And you know, like I said before, start a project that helps do that. Just keeping this in the forefront of your mind of like, what am I trying to convey with my images? What am I trying to say? Why am I showing this person isolated? Why am I showing a close up of this person? So whatever it is you're trying to convey, but like use all those tools in photography to convey that. You know, use the light to convey that. You know, use your composition to convey that. So if you're trying to show people are alone, step back a little bit with your images or have a lot of negative space in your images to give a sense of isolation. If you're trying to capture a certain emotion in the city, you, you've got to be there for those moments, right? You've got to be there for those moments to capture those emo emotions. If you like to be more playful, in your photography, then you need to anticipate more to capture those playful moments. Figure out who you are as a photographer. Figure out what you're trying to say. Again, in the beginning, it's normal to try to mimic, it's normal to try to create these single shots, but try to have purpose to your work. Even if you're not interested in like pure documentary and telling those kind of stories, your images should convey some sort of message. So, so put some thought into that. Use all those tools that you have as a photographer, your different lenses, your composition, your light, all those different things, the way you sequence images and things like that. Put thought into it. Constantly be trying to figure out who are you as a photographer? And what do you want your images to say? And that's important. You know, otherwise you're just never gonna improve and your images are just gonna be, they're gonna end up boring. So work on that. The next mistake I see people make in the street photography is to not open their mind technically and creatively in their photography. You know, keep an open mind with your composition. Uh, I remember early on in my career, I was like, oh, don't cut off people's heads and limbs and things like that. Uh, I mean, not literally, I'm not literally cutting. You should never be cutting off people's heads and limbs and things like that. But in your photography, like, you know, a lot of times like there's all these rules that you need to follow, that you think you need to follow, but you don't. You know, like just because you've never seen an image composed a certain way or exposed a certain way, doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. Actually, gives you should give you more reason to try to do it. So, you know, you should do it with purpose and do it with meaning. Don't just aimlessly try different things. Experiment with your photography. Experiment with like playing around with like just capturing shadows for the day and see what that looks like. You know, and what kind of message you're saying there or not showing people's heads and showing their hands. And what does that do? Does that bring the attention to what they're doing with their hands and not bring the attention to their face. When I photographed my story about the northern white rhinos, you know, the first day, of course you want the interaction between the caretakers and the rhinos just because it's just there, it's visual, it's interesting, but there's so many other shots to get. There's the shadow of the caretaker on the rhinos at a certain time. There's just the hand petting the rhino just to show that intimacy of the human skin and the rhino skin. There's so many different ways to compose your images, so many different things you can do with experimenting with composition, with light. I remember doing a story about a woman who was blind and I was really playing around around with overexposing and maybe it didn't work out as well as I thought but you know that's where your mind should go try different things think about in the context of your style as a photographer what you're trying to capture tying all those things I mentioned before but keep an open mind play around with different ways to expose play around with different compositions play around with different perspectives don't follow all the basic rules unless you just want to be like everybody else the last mistake I see people make is always going out with zoom lenses zoom lenses inherently make people stagnant they make you stand still and they make you a little bit lazy uh, some people pull them off and they use them well but I'm just telling you like it will put you in a better mode as if a street as a street photographer to move more to think more uh, it's a lot less clutter like I said I know this ties in a little bit with having too much gear but it's it's important so I just want to get through people always ask me about zooms or prime so why do you why not just carry like 124 to 70 first of all I love the quality of prime lenses they're just that much sharper I like the way they render a lot more uh, and that's even across like all different brands now I use the Leica 35 millimeter for my personal work, for my documentary work. I use the Sunmulex 35mm 1.4, I love it. But even in my commercial photography, I use prime lenses as well. I, I use Sony, I've used Sigma lenses, I've used Canon lenses, I've used just about everything. Prime lenses always just render a little bit nicer, they have a little more pop to them. Uh, but more importantly, it's just the way that they make me think, the way that they make me work, and the habits that it forces me into. You know, when you're out there shooting street photography, 
all that stuff I talked about, anticipation, things like that. It's so easy if you have a 24 to 70 or a 16 to 35 to just sort of like plop up, sit in the corner and just like zoom in and out. Now when I've got my 35, man, I'm moving. I'm all over the place. I'm like, okay, I know this frame. I know, I know this composition in my head already. I know what's gonna work, what's not gonna work. So rather than staying still, I'm moving. When I'm moving, I'm getting better shots. I'm climbing around, I'm getting down low. I'm thinking a lot more. I'm thinking a lot more before the shot. It's better, try it, just try it. Now what prime lens, that's gonna be up to you. Some people work really well with the 50, I don't, but I wanna get better at it, so I'm gonna practice a little more with the 50. Some people work well with the 28, they love that Leica Q because it's got that built-in 28. I know a lot of you out there like me wish that Leica Q had a built-in 35 because that's something that we're more interested in. 35 works for me, some people like to go even wider than that. Just figure out what works for you. Go out, just try it. Leave your zooms at home. If you're a commercial photographer, keep them if you need them. But I've tried to get rid of them even my commercial photography. And I'm telling you, it's made me a better photographer all around. And honestly, I think all across all my work, it's better when I shoot with prime lenses. So try it out. Go out with just that one lens. Go out with that prime lens. See what kind of images you capture. I guarantee you're going to be better. So that's it for today, guys. Thank you for watching this episode. If you have any questions, don't forget to ask me in the comment section. I do my best to answer every single question that you guys have. Sorry it's been a little bit since I've done an episode. Also, let me know what you think of the hair. Some of you didn't even know I had hair. I don't have a lot of hair, but I decided to not put the hat on today. I got a little fancy haircut. It's a fancy haircut, but I got a haircut, and I haven't gotten a haircut in like five years, so I went to the barber shop, and I just told the Vietnamese barber, I'm like, just give me a haircut. He's like, yeah, but what specifically? I'm like, I don't know, whatever you think works for a 44-year-old dude that looks like me, and so he gave me a haircut. So mixed reviews about it. Might, maybe I'll be putting my hat on, but it's been super, super hot here in Hanoi. And again, sorry I haven't been doing my episodes when I'm on a company trip from my business, my visuals. That was a lot of fun. I've been on the road shooting a lot of hotels. Hope to get back to doing a lot more episodes. Thank you guys for watching this episode. Again, don't forget to check out my online store at justinmott.com. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to have a wonderful day.